Hello everyone and welcome to a cool scratch tutorials video. Today we are going to be going over part one of making yourself a fruit ninja game. If you haven't seen fruit ninja, there is an example on screen right now, but let's just get into the video. First, what we want to do is just create our project. So let's go up to create and click it. And then I say we just get our characters ready and our backdrops ready. So I'm just going to start on the backdrops area. And a backdrop we want is the Fruit Ninja backdrop. So I've gone over here to a new tab and searched up Fruit Ninja background. You want to click on that. And I think the fourth one down here is a good picture. So I'm going to click on it. We can see that it looks like the Fruit Ninja background. I'm going to right click and click Save Image. I'm going to just save this as Fruit Ninja and click save and we can see it appears down here. Now what we want to do is just go to scratch and let's click on background and upload backdrop. Once we do that we can scroll down until we find uh, the Fruit Ninja image that we saved. We can see that mine is actually saved right here. I'm just going to click open. We can see that it opens the image, but it is the wrong uh, dimensions. So just to fix that, we want to go to this tool here and just go to the very top left corner, drag all the way down to the bottom right corner. And we can see that it selects that area. Now we just want to drag these corners until it fits the background more. We can see that it is taking up more of the background. Now I'm going to just drag the cross to the middle. And we can see that our backdrop is in the right size now. Now for backdrop one, I'm just going to drag it behind Fruit Ninja. And this is just going to be our you failed screen. So I'm just going to maybe get a rectangle. I'm going to fill it some sort of red, I think. Just going to drag it outside of the boundaries like this. And then I'm going to put text on it. I'm going to make this black text. I'm going to say you failed. And then I'm just going to select a different uh, a different font because I'm not a fan of that one. Maybe this one. Then I'm just going to drag it a little bigger so it's easier to see. And there we go. It's a you failed screen. So let's just go uh, to here. And when green flag clicked, all we want to do is make it so our Fruit Ninja background appears. So we want to switch backdrop to uh, Fruit Ninja. We can see it's saved as Fruit Ninja. There we go. It's the Fruit Ninja background. Now we can just delete uh, Scratch Cut here and we want to make one sprite that is just for the fruits. So let's go to choose a sprite and for right now let's just go to Apple. Just gonna select Apple and then go inside of costumes and we want to click choose a costume. Next, what we want is banana. We can see that banana appears as one of the costumes. Let's go back to choose a costume. And this time, let's choose orange. We can see that it appears right there. And we have three different fruits. Now, what we want to do is create a different costume for when the fruit is split in half. So what we want to do is right click on this and click duplicate. So now we have two apples. Go to the second apple and select your eraser tool. Uh, don't make it size 40. Let's select size 3 so it's just a straight line. And just drag it through the middle. That's a little high up, so I'm just going to undo it. Let me go back to size 3. Just go through the middle like that. And now we can see that it's sort of split in half. We just want to go to this tool right here. And we want to click on this. We want to click on that. We want to... You can shift and click to select everything. We can see that I can move everything. I forgot to select that one. So I'm just going to move it a little bit to the side. Just select the brown part of the stem and drag it back on like so. It's not going in place. OK, that's good. And now all we want to do is just select this area here. And we can see that it selects everywhere in the path. Except the red, I'm just going to screw it down right here. And we could select the red, and we can select the white. There we go. 
So we can see that when it's sliced in half, it goes from this sprite to this sprite. Now we want to do the same with the bananas. Let's go to our eraser tool. We can see it's already at size 3. Just split it in half like so. Go to this tool and we just want to sort of hover over everything. And let's just move this like right around here. We can see that did not select this part. Let's just drag it in place like that. And then we can just highlight everything in here. And we can just move it like so. We can see that this wasn't selected, but that's fine since we can just drag it. So we can see the difference between this banana is when it gets split, it looks like that. Same with the apple. Now let's just do it for the orange. Let's go back to our eraser tool and let's just split it in half. We can see that the black appears in the middle, but that is fine because that's just part of the orange. All we want to do is select this part here. We can see that it selects that part of the orange. And when we select this, it selects this part of the orange and we can split them in half. So we have our apple and then our apple sliced in half, our banana and then our banana sliced in half, and then our orange and our orange sliced in half. Now what we want to do is bring the banana up and the orange up. So it's the order of our costumes is apple, banana, orange, and then sliced apple, sliced banana, sliced orange. This is uh, very important for later on when we make our code. So now that we have our backdrops and our sprites, let's get started on the code. So when green flag clicked, we want to set our size maybe to like 120% because I think this is just a little bit small. So I'm just going to go to looks and select set size to 120%. Just going to drag it to the top left. And we're going to want to make a variable. This variable is going to be sort of our velocity of our apple when it goes up and when it goes down, when it gets tossed up and down. So let's go to my variables and let's call this uh, fruit velocity and select for all sprites and click OK. We just want to set this to zero at the beginning so everything resets. Next, we want it to go to maybe around here-ish, sort of. So I'm just going to click go to that position. Actually, I want it to be a little more off screen, maybe just like x96 and y negative 165. So when we click the green flag, we can see that it just goes all the way down here. Next, we want it to hide because the script we're going to be doing is it's going to be creating clones of itself, but the original character is actually going to be hidden. So we can see that it hides when we click the green flag. Next, we just want to go here and select a forever loop. Forever, we want to, let's see where it is, create clone of myself. If we keep on doing this, then it will just going to create a clone every single, uh, er, like, rapidly, very rapidly. So we just wanted to wait some time. We wanted to wait two seconds between each clone of itself. So it's going to create a clone and then it's going to wait two seconds and then it's going to create a clone and then it's going to wait two seconds. Next, let's start off on the code for when our character is actually a clone. To do this, let's go down to control and let's drag in when I start as a clone. We wanted to reset our velocity, of course. And once we've done that, we want to switch our costumes to random. We can, because we can see that we either want it to be apples, bananas, or orange. So to do that, we just want to go to looks and we want to switch costume to, and then just go to operators, pick random one to three. So what this is going to do, it's going to pick a random character, either one, two, or three. And so if we just go here and let's click show, when I click the green flag, we can see that it selected orange, it selected uh, apple that time. Um, we can see that it's, it is changing. There we see a banana, we saw orange banana, and we can see that it's changing. Very good. Let's just drag this show out for quickly. And we want to change our Y by a certain amount. 
but we want our x to be random. We want to change our y by, um, let's just drag this in, let's change our y by negative 175. So when I click the green flag, we can't actually see it, but it's going to change its y. If I click on it, we can see that the original character is down here, but the clone is going to start up higher. And we want to set its, uh, we want to set x to a random number, either down here or down here. So we want to go to set x to a pick random again. So let's go to operators and go to pick random. We want it to either be x negative 200 or x positive 200. So set x to negative 200 or 200. It's going to select anywhere in between. So if we just uh, go to looks and drag in the show statement, we can see that our we can see that the our character goes randomly. We can just see the stem here, but our character will move randomly throughout the bottom layer. Next, what we want to do is make it so our fruit actually uh, goes up on a screen and then falls back down, and that is what we're going to be using set fruit velocity for. What we want to do is uh, we want to repeat a command a certain amount of times for it to go up. We want it to repeat a uh, we want it to repeat a certain amount of times, but we want it to be sort of random, so that each fruit can go up a different height. Like some can go sort of low down, while others will go pretty high up. So we want to repeat this a pick random amount of times. We're going to want it to repeat 20 to 23 times. Now we're going to use the fruit velocity. We want to go to variables and we want to change fruit veloci velocity by one. And next, what we want to do is go to motion and we want to change y by fruit velocity. So this, what this will do is it will make our fruit go up a certain amount of times. If we click our green flag, we can see that it made it go up that far. That one was this far. We can see that one was that far. This one was a little lower down than that one. This one was higher than that. And now we just want our script for our character to go down. We want to just reset fruit velocity once we've done that. We want to just set fruit, fruit velocity to zero. So once we do that, we can see that it's zero. We can see that one went much higher than that banana. We want to just copy this and just bring it down there. Set fruit velocity to zero. And then we want it to repeat a certain amount of times. Since our max number is 23, we want it just to repeat 23 times so that we can see that our, our clone will actually just disappear out of screen. This time we want it to make it negative one. So when I click the green flag, we can see that it'll go up and then fall down. It'll go up and then fall down. In Fruit Ninja though, we can see that our apple and our bananas actually go a certain angle. They move across the screen rather than just up and down. And to do that, we're gonna have to cover this in part two of making yourself Fruit Ninja game. If you enjoyed this tutorial, and you want to see part two, I highly recommend subscribing and liking as it helps me out a lot. And when you subscribe, you can see when part two comes out. And I'll catch you guys in part two of making yourself Fruit Ninja game.